Hi, everyone. My name is John DePietro. And I'm Bob Zagami with the Camper Report Show. And in this Camper Report Show, Bob, I am going to talk to the director of the just recently concluded Hershey RV show and talk about the huge economic impact that it has on that marketplace. How about you, Bob? Well, actually, I've got a video with two RV legends. Well, one of them is named Bob Me? Tippin. Me? No, one of them is named Bob Tippin. The other is named Bob Zagami. It's a great interview. Trust wow. Me. That is going to be cool. Plus, we have Autograph, all the news. autographs at 11. We have all the news of the week from our friends where? RV Business, Rick Kessler, Woodall's Campground Magazine with Ben Quiggle. And they, these, these, this section that we're doing a little different twist with also came from RV Business. There we go. So stay with us, everybody. We've got a great show for you. Attention all RVers. Say goodbye to roof worries and hello to worry-free travel with RV Roof Magic. This revolutionary liquid butyl roof coating is specially formulated to protect your RV from the elements to extend its lifespan and prevent leaks. With simple application and outstanding results, RV Roof Magic is the go-to choice for RV owners seeking superior roof protection. Don't let roof maintenance issues hold you back. RV Roof Magic is the only liquid butyl rubber in the world that offers a one coat, no primer coverage, and a 10 year warranty. Visit rvroofmagic.com slash RV life and extend your roof another 18 to 20 years. Hi everybody, my name is John DePietro. Welcome back to the Camper Report Show. Bob Zagami is with me and uh, Bob, we're gonna do things a little bit differently this week. We're gonna spend our new segment talking about probably um, the biggest RV show in America. Not probably, but the America's largest RV show is what they build themselves as. And um, we were just there. It was in Hershey, Pennsylvania. I had a uh, extensive conversation with Heather Leach, who's the executive director. And um, we're going to be playing that during our feature segments. But let's just talk a little bit about the show because... There was a lot of discussion about how is this show going to do in a soft market, and uh, as it turned out, pretty well. You know, it it was. I think everybody went into it with trepidation with the market conditions and the economic conditions and a national election coming up. I think they thought people would come through it doom and gloom, and and that wasn't the case. It was from the opening bell. Uh, the attitudes were really good. The people were excited. Uh, the lines were very long. They didn't break an attendance record. They had a little over 47, almost 48,000 people. But and they had not... more people. They had more people than last year. Yeah, yeah, they had a little bit more than last year. Uh, they were buying. Uh, the attitudes were good. I think at the uh, start of the second day, when you talk to whether it was a manufacturer or a dealer or a supplier or any member of Heather's staff, there was a good vibe about it. And I don't usually use that word, but everything felt good. Almost, It almost felt normal. Although the conditions were not normal, it felt like a normal Hershey show. Right, right. You know, we spent a lot of time in the RV life booth. And, um, you know, after we made our way, talking to the various exhibitors and manufacturers, and there was a steady flow, uh, both on... Wednesday and Thursday of traffic. And we had a lot of people that already own RVs that were coming to see what new ones they could buy. Um, I, I think we saw more existing RV owners than people that were looking for the first time, which is always interesting to see that mix of first timers versus repeat buyers. Yep. And uh, it was kind of an interesting mix. Claude Donati, the uh, founder of Nexus RV was commenting that the it was a reversal of last year's numbers. And last year, 25% were motorized units, 75% were mobiles. But for the show, he felt that it was mostly 75 motor for his group was 75% uh, percent motorized. And maybe I got that wrong because he doesn't do any trailers. Yeah, he doesn't okay. do trailers. You're referring to someone else? I, probably, I I think, oh, I know what it was. It was the Rev Group. So they had uh, two, the director of sales and marketing, Weston Dunker, uh, mentioned, and also the Rev Group sold 75% motorized, 25%. Uh, 
He said, on a, on a, on a busy year, it might be 50-50. Uh, I know campers in Ben Hirsch, they, they only had three displays this year. And all of them were motorized. They didn't do towables. So a lot of the people who commented during and after the show thought that motorized sales were doing very well at this show. Mm. Now, and that would be the affluent buyer. The diesel pushes went very well this year. I know Frank Roberts at uh, Longview RV was staffing the Berkshire display. And I think he said they had seven units. Uh, Nexus had 20. They sold about 20 to 25 and of course, when that show starts, it turns into a dealer show. It's a manufacturer show on Tuesday. They pay for the space, and then they sub it out to uh, dealers afterwards. And General RV was representing several. Uh, I don't know how many displays I, they had. All I saw was red and yeah. white. Yep. Red, those oh. red shirts with those sales reps, and they were all over the place. But the interesting thing is um, we saw a lot of new units being um uh, displayed for the first time. And we saw the Seneca um, by Forest River that was... Jaco, uh, Jaco. Uh, well, we saw one by Forest River that Doug Gedart told me, showed me. Um, maybe Salem. Was, he showed you the Salem. Salem, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Veranda, one of, one of those two, whatever it was. We Look, at, when you see so many units, you it's can't John. remember what day John. it is. It was only 1,500 units. Only 1,500 you, mean to tell me units. you couldn't remember every one of them. Right. But there were some very interesting floor plans and innovations like um, park models with basically two floors throughout that had a lot of sleeping area for kids and uh, new uh, decks, expandable decks and that type of thing. So um, there was... Travel, travel trailers with uh, decks similar to what we've seen on fifth wheels and yep. toy haulers. Yep. over the last five or 10 years was also one. Yep. Uh, New John, Ferrando, John Ferrando, the CEO of uh, Blue Compass, he said it was a fantastic show. The attendance was down for his, in terms of his booth display, but he thought they had a great show given what they anticipated coming in. And, you know, half of half of the success of a show and sales is, you know, we've both been in sales a long time. Follow it's the, it's the attitude and the follow-up, right? If you if you go into a show thinking that it's going to be terrible, it will indeed be. It will be. If, will you know, be. if you if you're going to be doom and gloom, the consumers read that, and I think that was a big part of the success this year. We talked about it a little bit earlier, but the attitude of the companies, the people, the salespeople on the floor, uh, suppliers were very willing to answer any questions for the people. And that place was always, at least the time that we were there, yep. it was always busy. Now, um, I, one of the fellows that quoted was said that Saturday and Sunday didn't necessarily live up to prior expectations. They thought it would start and go well, but this uh, sat slow and in, increase in prior years. This one started really fast on the, the first three or four days. And the weekend was down a little bit on and on attendance, which was a little bit strange in the sense that there was no rain. They, they had a perfect, yeah, perfect week weather. every perfect day. Weather. And typically on Wednesday and Thursday would have it. Uh, but, a, couple yeah. of the, uh, a couple of the exhibitors thought that that was a reflection of the blue collar workers. They're still not ready to open up the checkbook and, and buy right now. They're, they're going to wait and see what the next few months look like on the economic scale. But the affluent buyers were definitely there. And, and especially on, on the big stuff, the big diesel motorhomes, there's other than Tampa, there's no other place in the country where you can go and see that yeah. number of large diesel pushes. And those people have a lot of discretionary income. They just they just write the check. Right. And One other interesting aspect, though, you're talking about uh, attendance, et cetera. Um, they had about 7,000 on Wednesday and about 14,000, uh, no, about 12,000 on Thursday. Now, the difference between when when I was um, traversing the show on Wednesday, I said, geez, this is pretty busy today. Tomorrow's going to be a zoo because it's usually much bigger. It's the discount day. And it got to the point where you couldn't walk around on that day. Now, I said, I'm glad I'm not here for Friday, Saturday, or Sunday because if you were a serious buyer on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, if you didn't get there on the opening bell, Number one, you wouldn't be able to get into a lot of the units. And secondly, you wouldn't be able to talk to a sales rep or a manufacturer's rep and 
answer, have any of your questions answered. So there's almost a science to going to uh, when you should go to an RV show. And um, you know what? Um, sometimes when they're too crowded, it's not good for the sales rep and it's not good for the sales for the people that are looking to buy because they can't connect. And let's face it, with a purchase like an RV, whether it's your first one or a subsequent one, there are always tons of questions to be answered before you ready to sign. Yeah, that's, sign a, that's a great point, John, because this show is so big that several of the exhibitors, they weren't, they weren't complaining, but they were just bringing to the attention that if you're in the very back, even though there are gates in the yep. back, most people yep. come in the main gate. So yep. they felt that the traffic down there didn't equate to what was up front. So people going to this show would be better going through the front gate and going directly to the back, back. Right. the farthest corners of the display, because nobody's going to be there. They're going to be very slow to get there. Yep. <laughs> it's funny because I had someone stop me when I was at the RV Life booth and said, hey, you saved me a lot of time. I, I said, what do you mean? He said, I heard you in one of your um, earlier shows say that when you come to a show, go right to the back and then work the opposite way of the flow. And he said, I did that. And I was able to get a lot of my questions answered. So yeah. um, and, yep. somebody is listening to us, Bob. Well, well uh, Doug, is it Doug Miller? I think it was Doug Miller. Um, Dave Miller, Doug Miller. Come on, I just had it. The one I, I lost that poor guy twice. But Miller from the Rev Group was commenting on that, that he didn't think that they had the amount of traffic that they should for there because they had everything. They had diesel pushes, Class A, yep. Class C, Class B. But they kind of felt like they got a little bit of a too far out there and didn't see the number of people that some of the other ones were doing. But it's difficult. I mean, putting together a show and trying to squeeze 1,500 RVs along with everything else in the suppliers is tough and they have a drawing they have a drawing and you know based on past experience and and contributions so there were there were many people that didn't get into the show that would gladly to anybody that was really wanted to complain there's other people that would take that space yeah uh, absolutely to absolutely. have that uh, so Ash ashley uh bontrager ashley bontrager lehman who founded ember rv she thought that the uh, despite the market conditions they were all that, that everybody's been experiencing throughout the year, she felt very positive about the show. Mm -hmm. Sales were solid. Reception was very good, not only to our product, but I felt like the enthusiasm for our being was back in a really good place. And I think that's a that's a great description of what we all witnessed at the Hershey show this year, and we just felt that we're back in a good place and. Hopefully that's, that's a good run for us. All heading in the right direction. So yep. it's a scoop on our review of the Hershey show. And we've got two great features coming up with the legendary Bob Tiffin and another legendary person along with that show and Heather <laughs> Leach from the Hershey management team at this show. We'll be back with more right here on the Camp Report Show. All right. Thanks, John. Hey there, RVers. We get it. Your insurance and warranty needs are as unique as your travel destinations. That's why RVer Insurance has teamed up with Wholesale Warranties to cover all the bases. From health insurance to RV coverage and warranties, we've got you sorted every step of the way. With a solid track record in providing top-notch health insurance and affordable RV insurance options, RV Insurance has you covered. And for those unexpected repair bills, Look no further than our friends at Wholesale Warranties, leaders in reliable coverage and customer support. Start your RV protection journey today at RVerInsurance.com or WholesaleWarranties.com slash RVerInsurance. Everybody, welcome back to the Camp Report Show. My name is John DiPietro, and we are at America's largest RV show. No asterisks next to it. This is America's largest RV show. And we're talking with Heather Leach. And Heather, I don't have your title there, but I'm just going to say you're one of the uh, chief cook and bottle washers here, along with, <laughs> a, along with a staff of hundreds that puts this show on. And you know what? I was thinking when I was driving in this morning, at 7.30 in the morning, and everybody's flowing into the Giant Center. And the show doesn't even open to the public till 9 o'clock. 
the amount of people that are working here, the amount of people that bring in revenue to the um, Hershey area, um, but you know, RV, RV, the RV industry and certainly shows don't get credit for the economic impact that they have on a marketplace. And for 55 years, this place has been uh, bringing them in. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and it even starts the week before with setup week. Right, that, exactly. You know, people are flying in, you know, and there's some people are here for at least two and a half weeks. So that's, you know, you're talking hotels, I think area campgrounds, they're usually sold out, you know, yep. at the end of this show for next year. I just talked with one of my booth mates who said um, on Sunday, I will book for next year. Yeah, yeah. And, that and happens. if I don't, I'm out. <laughs> yep, yep. And that happens a lot. And, you know, and, you know, all these people are eating out. I mean, I mean, I'm here for a week in a hotel and, you know, you're eating breakfast out, you're catching dinner or something. And, you know, it is kind of amazing when you think about it, because I, I think we print like 5,000 badges. So that's 5,000 yep. people. Even Employees. we went to get, um, yep. uh, we had to rent a van for something this week. And they said they were even out of all rental vehicles because of everybody flying in. You know, so it's things like that that you don't really think about, um, you know, like rental cars and, and everything like that. So, yeah, there's it, there is a huge impact, especially on the on the local area. You know, me. You know, we are right next to Hershey Park, so I know on the weekends, um, you know, people come over here and then they go to Hershey Park and Chocolate World. So, and so those companies and also benefit from you know all the RVers coming to town. Right, and you know, people say, oh yeah, they're renting in the hotel rooms, but people need to understand that um, dynamic pricing in the hotel industry is the same as the airline industry, and campgrounds adopted that during COVID, mm -hmm. and. Um, when there's a high demand, the prices go up. And I know some people that are uh, spending, they're here for nine nights in a campground that's a half hour from here and it's kind of costing them $1,200. Yeah. Now, again, it's all work deductible, et cetera, but uh, multiply that by, um, you know, several thousand RVs and you can see it's sizable. The other thing I noticed is uh, in prior years, doing a license plate scan in the parking lot uh, just yesterday, and I'm from Boston, and we're 400, 350 miles away, okay? But the number of people that I've bumped into that are from New England and Virginia, and you know, you can tell because they all wear their hearts on their hat because they have their favorite baseball team or <laughs> hockey team. This is not just um, Harrisburg, Hershey, and Lancaster. No. It's coming. Here. You know, it's always fascinating after the show, we collect, um, like all of our prepaid tickets, you can put in your zip code and yep. we put that into a program to kind of see where they all come from. And it's you now obviously like the Northeast is is pretty the heaviest. Right. Hit. Oh, absolutely. But it's I mean, like they've come they come from all over the place, all across the country. You know, we have people from Europe. Like, it's crazy how far people travel to get yep. here. Yeah, it's certainly become a destination. I know a, 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 a YouTuber with 255,000 subscribers traveling Robert. Um, we saw him here last year, we saw him here yesterday, and yeah. he said, I plan my fall around Hershey. Yep. And, um, um, you know, from that end, the no, they're that in an RV, but again, they're in a campground. Um, the hotel rates go sky high, and the restaurants are full. Absolutely. Um, but usually convention visitors bureaus only give credit to conventions and not right. to shows like this. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure if you talk to any of the local businesses, they know when we're coming to town. Yeah. So uh, they know, they, they know that there's going to be a major impact. Yeah. Yeah. It's got to be hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not in the millions. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, from that end, but we want to. Um, you know, you're so you're so placid here today. It's Thursday. It's the second day of the show. You've got a weather forecast that is phenomenal for the rest of the week. Yes. Um, planning for next year begins what Monday. <laughs> Pretty much. Sunday night, about nine o'clock. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. It's. I mean, we take the week to uh, re kind of recover, and then we're right back at it. Okay. One more question. Um, for this show itself, how many additional people are hired to work this show that don't work uh, here year round? So for our general staff, I mean, we probably have. I'm gonna say sixty, probably additional people between taxi drivers, uh, ticket sellers, and yes. like our operations team. Okay. Yeah. And they're all paying income taxes on that and uh, so, yeah. you know, et cetera, et cetera. So certainly a boost. Yep. So RVing is fun. It's also big business. We want to thank Heather Leach for spending this time with us. 
and wish you the best as the show continues throughout the week. Thank you. So there's the Tiffin logo. And there's the Tiffin. And there's the Zagami. Take it away, sir. <laughs> hey, thanks, John. Bob, it's great to see you again. You know, uh, it's always a fun show at Hershey. Sure. Because everyone wants to come to the Bob Tiffin bus and get your autograph and say hello and thank you for the years, the many years of service to the RV industry. We've been here, we come every year since 1973. That they, we had two years, but they come from COVID. Right. Yep, yep. But we've been here every year since then. Well, you know, it's, it's funny. I did my first story on you in the late 90s, because I started writing for RV News in 1996, and it was within two or three years that Don McGarry said, you gotta go to Red Bay, Alabama, and you gotta interview Bob Tippett. And we had a tremendous, tremendous interview. And it was interrupted a couple of times, because when a customer calls, Bob Tippett answers. And he did, and I wonder if you remember it, it may still be on the wall. Before I left, you asked me to take a picture of you in the boys, sure. and we took it. We took it in front of the Shell yeah. yeah. oil uh, awesome. yeah, gas pump. That's right. We still have that gas pump. Yeah. Yeah. And and and, yeah. and you it was, and it was on the cover of the magazine. The and you called me and you said, "Can I buy that picture?" Uh -huh. I said, "I will give you that picture, but you're not going to pay for that picture." And that was in the late '90s. I still have that. You still have that. Great, great. So uh, today you're in the 82nd anniversary edition, Bob Tiffin edition. Very special, honoring you and the family and the service to the industry. And what's what's your message to people who are perhaps aren't in the RV industry and don't love it as much as you and I? Do what would you say to the new people coming through that door who've never met Bob Tiffin, but they meet you, they hear about you? What's your message to people in this economy, in these challenging times, about RV? Well, you know, in this RV industry, the business is up and down. We know that, and of course, it will get better. I, I can, I can guarantee you. In a few months, things will change, and business will get. We came here, and it, it's the same thing happened in 08, 09, and 10. Yep. And business will get better. Don't get don't get excited. Just just, just stay the course, and, and let's go to town and buy an RV. And and I'll tell you what, I was here just saying today, there is a buzz about this show. There is no doom and gloom. The people are smiling. The manufacturers are smiling. There's just a good sense that things are going to get better real quick. Yeah, I can feel it. It feels much better than it did the, the last show. The last one we had down at uh, Tampa was a little down, but you know, I can tell the difference here. It's going to be a great show. That's 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 what I came, you know, woke up this morning right. thinking the same thing, saying, man, it, it just feels good. It's going to be a it feels good show. for the industry, yes, and it feels good for Bob Tippett. Yes, sir. You it bet. is always a pleasure appreciate, seeing you, Bob. Appreciate the friendship all these years. Uh, you, you, yes, right. sir. you want to bring in the uh, oh, Judy, oh, yeah, executive Judy. chairman of the board, Judy, come on up. Come on, Judy. Oh, okay. Judy. Well. Judy, when we want to hear the real story about the Tiffin family, Mrs. Yeah. Right Bob's to lovely wife of how many years, Bob? Nearly 63. 63 years. Man, I felt I was doing good, Judy, because we, went, we just did 56. Yeah. 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 All these years, yeah. But, three but three see, this is the woman yeah. behind the legend. Yeah. She tells us all the real names of the people because the names that they use right now, they're not their real names because there are too many people all named Bob and Lee. Oh. <laughs> right? So isn't Lee not really Lee? Isn't Lee his middle name? Uh -huh. Your grandson? He's, he's yeah. named after our son, Van Lee. Yeah, but his his name is Van. The, but he goes our by. son's name is Van. Okay. So Lee is Van Lee Jr. And that's his name. Ah, uh, okay. But and he goes by then, Lee. Yeah. 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 But, and and yeah. there's three sons. There's, there's uh, and so Van, uh, Lee has a son. He's Van Lee the third. He's not yet in the business. John, John, yeah, no, John, not yet in the business. Judy, John not. can't count to three. Okay, well, I didn't know that. Northern, I'm a northerner. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. But now you got grandsons that are running around here. Oh, yeah. yeah that's got to be a, that, isn't that an amazing uh -huh. feeling, Grandma? Trent, uh, Trent's one of our grandsons. Yeah, we just here. met Trent. Uh-huh, Trent and Lee are here. Trent yeah, got in his, his first interview. Yeah, okay. Oh, we did. threw him it right is. into the fire. Yeah. <laughs> we threw him right into the fire. Well. Uh, Bob, maybe you have questions for the co-chair of the board from this bob or no, this bob this bob this lady right here oh, what, I'm what, Judy. What, <laughs> <laughs> what has it meant to you to see the growth of the company because you know 
Well, guys, guys tend to embellish things, but you, <laughs> you, you were there. You were there in the beginning. Yes. The very beginning. Mm -hmm. how, how do you feel today with you know, six well, years of marriage and Bob's legend? Uh, well, nearly sixty-three years of marriage. <laughs> <laughs> and she's not a legend. He's not a legend in the family. He's a legend in the business, but is he yeah. still a legend can't, can't at home? You, can't you hear now? <laughs> Judy's in the kitchen. Bob, well, it's time to empty the trash. Will you get that on there? <laughs> well, he works so much, I don't ask a lot of him at home. <laughs> so you spent a lot of su suppers at home by yourself? No, he's, he's there. But he's I mean, been... way back when the in the building years. What about I wanted well, no, well, we, we lived in Red Bay then, so. It was just a little piece yeah, to the house. About 10 minutes from the plant. Right? Yeah. 10 minutes uh -huh. from the plant. Uh -huh. So you could get up real early right. and uh, still be at work and get home That's right. uh -huh. at a reasonable time. Uh -huh. Your interviews, Agami, I'm taking over, but it, you it's are, your, you your are, interview. You are, you are. He does this. You know, he, he tells me to do something, well, and then he answers the question for me. Well, that's huh? kind of handy, that isn't handy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have to think too much anymore. Just, I just ask John for the, for yeah. the hints. Well... That's so good. what what do you think is ahead for you and Bob in the future? Do you ever see a day when you don't come to shows? I don't. No, I, as long as I feel no. like it, I'm gonna come. Yeah. To yeah. You, you'll be there, yeah. and Judy will be with you. This, this right. is his hobby. Yeah. That's right. That's, that's what my wife everything. tells me. Yeah, that, that, this is his hobby. Yep. So this is it's what not makes work. what makes him happy. Yeah, and it's He's not happiest. work. He's happiest. No, it's not work. Dude. No. Mm -hmm. no. He's well, happiest. He's happier doing this than anything I know of. Well, we appreciate your contributions too, Judy. Oh, well, so it wouldn't you. be right if it you, if you couldn't come to us. Yeah. yeah. All right, Bob, yeah. we got to get off camera now. Okay. Right? Okay.